In American history, this is the most secure prison. No one could escape from this prison. Those who have tried, they all have died. But one determined group managed to do this impossible. And this movie is not just a story, it's a depiction of a real-life incident. So without further delay, let's start today's story. At the beginning of the movie, we see a person being taken to a place on a ship, in the darkness of the night. At that time, there was heavy rain outside. This place was a prison, and the name of this prison was Alcatraz. The person being transported there, his name is Frank Morris. He was a convict arrested for bank robbery, that's why he was brought to this prison. In this prison, those prisoners were kept, those who were notorious criminals, who had murdered dignitaries or committed major bank robberies, and also, those who had attempted to escape from jail several times, all such accused were kept in this prison. After Morris was brought to this prison, the first thing that happened was a health checkup. Then he was made to take a shower, and that very night he was taken to his cell. In this prison, each inmate had a separate cell. The next day, Morris was taken to the warden's room. The warden informed him about all the rules and regulations of the prison that he needed to abide by. The rules he had to follow included that how often he had to cut his hair within a month, how many times he had to take a shower, how many times he had to report attendance throughout the day, and many more. However, despite being prisoners, there were also some facilities for their entertainment, they could read books from the prison library, they could also read magazines. Although these magazines were never up to date, this was because the warden didn't want the inmates to know what was happening outside the prison at the current date. However, within the prison, all inmates also had to perform various tasks based on their skills. Someone worked as a carpenter, some in cleaning. However, they had to follow the prison rules in performing these tasks. If anyone didn't follow the rules, they were locked in a dark room where sunlight couldn't enter. And since this prison was situated within an island, so, if any prisoner tries to escape from there, he has to swim across that sea. So escaping from jail was almost impossible. Because, in the waters of the sea there were great waves, and were fierce aquatic creatures. All these details were explained to Morris by the warden. During this interaction, Morris slyly steals a nail cutter from the warden's table, which the warden didn't notice at all. The next day during the break, Morris goes to the library. There he met an inmate named English. English has been here for a long time, as his life sentence had been converted to imprisonment. Both of them love to read books, so they quickly become friends. Morris asks to English, have you ever tried to escape from here? English smiles and replies, in this prison, there are 12 attendance checks every day. Exactly, attendance is taken every two hours for the inmates. Each cell has a separate key, and these keys remain with warden. If he allows it, guards can take the keys. Without the correct reason, no one can go out of the cell. There are seven tall towers around the prison, where guards keep watch 24 hours a day. So far, no one has been able to escape from this prison. Imagine, you had tricked with the guards and escaped from them. But, the deep sea surrounding the prison would never allow you to escape. The water in that sea is so cold that within a few minutes, anyone could succumb to the chill. Actually, escaping from this prison is impossible. A few years ago, a prisoner attempted to escape, but the guards in the tower shot and killed him right before my eyes. So, never even think about trying to escape from here. Hearing all this, Morris becomes somewhat fearful. After that, we can see that a prisoner named Wolf has been disturbing Morris since he arrived at the prison, something Morris couldn't tolerate. On that day during the break, due to this reason, a fight breaks out between Morris and Wolf. Consequently, the guards lock them both in a dark room. There Morris faces severe torture, even cold water is thrown on him with a hose pipe. After two days, when Morris becomes physically weak, he is moved to another cell. After a few days, another prisoner arrives there, his name was Charlie. Over the course of a few days, a friendship develops between Morris and Charlie. And there was a prisoner named Doc. Doc had a talent for drawing great pictures, so, Warden asks Doc to draw one of his picture. Doc draws Warden's picture very well but Warden doesn't like the picture. Therefore, he takes all the equipment for painting from him. When Doc asks Warden, why all the painting equipment is taken away from him, then Warden could not give any answer to him. Doc then realizes that the Warden has deliberately mistreated him. Painting was his only hope of survival in this prison, and that hope was taken away from him by Warden. Doc is very distressed by this behavior of Warden. 
So, the next day, while working, he cuts his fingers with a sharp tool, and a sight that frightens everyone present there. A few days later, their two more prisoners arrived. Their names were, Clarence and John. Morris recognized them when he saw them, because, before that they were in the same jail. They were transferred to this prison because of attempting to escape from the previous one. One day, during the lunchtime, they asked Morris, have you found any way to escape from here? In reality, Clarence and John know that, Morris is the only one who is an expert in escaping from prisons. But Morris remained silent. The next day, during lunchtime, again Clarence and John ask Morris the same question. This time Morris responds, yes, I have found a way to escape from here. Last night, I examined the walls inside the cell using a nail cutter. At that time, I noticed that the walls around the ventilator in the cell, had become quite fragile. So, it's possible to break it easily with some force. Additionally, since this prison is located near the sea, the salty air has corroded the metal net on the ventilator. Therefore, breaking it is also possible. If we can get out through that ventilator once, we can directly reach the roof of the prison and make our way out. Hearing all this, Clarence says, all your ideas are fine. But, when it comes to the broken ventilator, how are you going to fix it? At that point, Morris says, the pages of the magazines provided for reading to us from the library are very thick. Keeping those magazine pages inside, if a picture of a net like a ventilator can be painted on it, and if that picture is put up on the wall, from a distance, no one will be able to understand whether it's real or false. Furthermore, if something is placed in front of the ventilator to act as a guard, then it would be nearly impossible for anyone to understand. Morris also says, we will run away from here at night, because, we have to use the whole night. John then says that when the guards come to patrol, if they don't find us in the cell, they will start looking for us. Morris then laughs and says, this is why all of us need to create identical dolls using paper and cardboard, so that they look just like us. Morris then tells John, since you work in the jail salon, you have to bring some hair from there. We will then attach those hairs to the heads of the dolls. When we will run away, keeping them in our cells and we will cover the dolls with cloth, so that the guards cannot realize that we are not in our cells. After that, Morris instructs Clarence, since you work in the trailer area, you have to bring some raincoats from there. You will sew the raincoat exactly as I will teach you, so that the air can enter it. And it will also work as our life jacket, and wearing it we will cross the sea. As a result, we will not feel cold, as well as it will act as a life jacket. No matter how stormy the sea, none of us will drown. And our final step is to cross the sea to the other side. The city on other side of sea, is named Cisco. However, we won't go to Cisco. With a bit more effort and by going a bit further, we will reach Angel Island. Asked why they would go to Angel Island instead of Cisco, then Morris explains, after they hear about our escape, the security guards will search first in the jail, then the sea, and finally in the city of Cisco. So, we will go to Angel Island, which is already somewhat far from there. From there, it will be very easy for us to escape, they won't be able to find us in any way. Morris informs everyone, every night when everyone is asleep, we will work on breaking the wall of the ventilator. And when one of us is working on breaking the wall, the others will keep an eye on the guards. This way, we will complete the first step. That night, they start breaking the wall from midnight. When Morris was breaking the wall, Charlie kept an eye on whether any guard was coming towards their cell. However, they encountered a problem. The part of the nail cutter with which Morris was digging the wall, it was no longer working, because the inner part of the wall was very strong. The next day, during lunchtime, Morris cleverly manages to get some dirt on his eating spoon from his shoe, and he calls the guard. He tells the guard that there is dirt stuck on his spoon, and he needs a new one. At that moment, John tells the guard that he wants to work in the kitchen. Hearing this, the guard takes both of them to the officer in charge. John went there and talked to the officer, and taking advantage of the opportunity, Morris mentioned the need for a new spoon, managing to acquire two spoons. In reality, John and Morris had planned this action, otherwise, Morris wouldn't have been able to get two spoons from there. Maurice then takes a coin from an elderly inmate named Litmus. That night, Morris made some powder from the coin, and put a few matches sticks together and set it on fire. Then, using the heat of the fire, he fused the spoon handle and nail cutter blade together. Thus he developed a powerful tool for digging through walls. Then one by one they all broke the ventilators of their cells. 
The next day, when librarian came to distribute books and magazines to them, Morris took a considerable amount of magazines from him. Using the thick pages from the magazines, he created a replica ventilator. He placed it on the wall and carefully matched its color with the wall paint. This was done to make it difficult for anyone to easily understand that it was a replica ventilator. The next day, Charlie brings a canvas and some painting tools from the warden under the pretext of painting. Among those colors, Charlie had taken a skin color. With that color, they paint the heads of the dolls, then they all put wigs on the dolls' heads. Finally, their replica dolls are ready. The next day, during the lunchtime they decide, tonight, John and Morris will go outside through the ventilator, and when they go out, they will take the life jackets with them. That night, they use the ventilator to get outside with the life jackets. However, they face another problem. To exit through the roof route, they need to open a metal bolt. However, they didn't have any cutter or screwdriver with them. Then they return to their cells. The next day, while practicing in the music room, Morris notices a small table fan there. Seizing the opportunity, Morris puts the fan inside his musical instrument bag. He was almost caught by the guards as he left the music room, but the guard leaves him and checks Charlie. After that, he takes an extension cord from Litmus. That night, Morris and John go to the rooftop again. They dismantle the blades of the table fan. Then, using the extension cord, they connect the fan to the electric supply. The fan starts running at a high speed without the blades. The rod to which the fan blades are attached, that rod starts spinning at high speed, and they used it like a drill machine to remove the bolt. That means, now they can escape from the jail. The next morning when the librarian came to distribute the magazine, at that time Morris said goodbye to him. This seems somewhat suspicious to English. At night warden and a guard come to Morris's cell. They conduct a search, but find nothing suspicious. After that when they leave the cell, the guard informs Warden that for the past few days, Charlie and Morris have been secretly discussing something among themselves. Upon hearing this, Warden tells the guard to shift Charlie and Morris to separate cells the next morning. The next morning, during the breakfast they decided that tonight they would run away from jail. On the other hand, the inmate named Wolf, he harbored a strong resentment towards Morris, because it was due to Morris that he had to stay in the dark cell for two months. In the afternoon of that day, when Morris was wandering in the prison yard, Wolf attempted to attack him from behind with a knife. Fortunately, English saw this happening. English intervened and stopped Wolf, and Morris survived the attack. That night, when everyone was asleep, Morris, Clarence and John arranged the dummy dolls they had made on their beds, covered them with blankets, and used the ventilator to escape from the cell. However, Charlie was not with them. Morris couldn't understand why Charlie didn't join them. They decided not to waste any more time for Charlie and proceeded to escape from there. On the other hand, Charlie was shown to his cell. He was lying inside, crying silently, tears were streaming down his eyes, but it was unclear why he was crying. Perhaps he was afraid of escaping from jail. On the other hand, Morris and the others carefully climbed the pipe and slowly made their way up. They opened the iron gate, which they had previously unlocked with the help of the fan. And if they can get out of here, they will directly reach the roof of the jail. Security guards from the tower were patrolling with searchlights. If they were caught by these guards, their plan would be completely foiled, even the guards could shoot and kill them. But one by one they reached the roof of the jail, through the gate that looked like a chimney. On the other hand, we see that Charlie kicks and breaks the fake ventilator in his cell, and trying to get out of there. Then the whole thing becomes clear to us. Because, we saw from the beginning that Charlie was a bit of a soft-spoken person. So he was afraid to escape after all. He couldn't muster up the courage to escape from the prison, so she was crying. However, he mustered up the courage to climb up the pipe. But he stopped again when he came to the gate, because, to get out of here, he must first jump and grab the iron rod, and he then can reach the roof. Alternatively, if someone held his hand from above and pulled him up, he could reach the roof. However, there was no one outside at that moment, because, Morris and the others had gone far ahead by then. Charlie jumps and tries to catch the road of the gate, but he failed. On the other hand, Morris and others, having evaded the searchlights, slowly descended using the water pipe. After reaching the back of the prison, they made their way to the shore of the sea. Then they left the prison behind and reached the shore of the sea. They fill the air with their mouths in the special life jackets made by them. Then all of them wear the jackets. Then they all slowly went down into the sea water, 
and started swimming. And in this way, Morris, John and Clarence make a fool of everyone and slip away from the prison. The next morning, when a guard come to patrol, then we find Charlie in his cell, that is, since he could not escape, so he returned to his cell. The guard notices that Morris is still sleeping even though it's quite late, and he doesn't respond to the call. So, when the guard opens Morris's cell and goes inside to remove the blanket, he sees the dummy doll, making it appear as if it were Morris. Upon seeing this, he immediately informs the warden that Morris, John and Clarence have escaped from the prison. The warden then issues a search warrant. They conduct a search using helicopters, boats, and even a dog squad, but they fail to find Morris and the others. Everyone, including the warden, starts to believe that they might have drowned in the water. Towards the end of the movie, we learn that even after extensive efforts by the American Investigation Agency, they couldn't find any trace of Morris, John or Clarence. They couldn't even locate their dead bodies. Within a year of this incident, Alcatraz Prison is permanently closed. And that's how the story of the movie concludes. So friends, how did you like the explanation of the movie based on today's true event? Comment and let me know for sure. We'll be back with more extraordinary movie stories. Until then, stay well and healthy.